them. Guys, thank you for what you're doing. We have how many? 1,800? Is that correct? We have 1,800 women in this room. When, you know, a few years ago, I, I realized na dami palang issue ng babae. <laughs> Oh, sabi ko kailangan yata magkaroon ng ano, ng parang ministry for women. And I've been trying to hound people saying, can you do a ministry here in Manila for women, just for women? Because iba yung issues namin eh. Yung mga issue namin kay mga lalaki. Ay, hindi, joke lang. <laughs> Gulo nyo eh. Hindi, <laughs> joke. Diba? Pero totoo yun, diba? Na yung mga babae, iba yung mga issues natin. And we need something, fellow women who will speak into our lives, correct? So, I'm just so grateful to the Color Me Ladies women for starting this thing in Cebu. And it, from all over the regions also, who, th those who came from Mga Negros, thank you for coming over. And I'm praying that in the coming years, hindi lang one grand ballroom, marami pa. Diba? <laughs> okay. So anyway, we're a room full of women. There are married people here, I'm sure, who are single. Single and believe. Wow, yan. Okay, huh? We will pray later. <laughs> oh, oh, we will pray for the desires of God, not your desires. Diba? We will delight in Him. Sabi ni Tita ko, ni. Okay, para yung desire niya ang mapunta sa atin. Kasi baka yung desire niyo, hindi desire ni God, eh, hindi magkakatugma yun. Um, who are the stay-at-home moms? Meron? Yan. Mo working mommies. Yan, ako, marami tayong iba-iba dito. Mga solo parents. Yan. Grabe, iba yan. Oh. We have two champions here and you can see that, you know, solo parenting is not something that you pity or doesn't look nice. You can see really vibrant women who are just championing, you know, this is how to parent, not by myself but with God, right? So that's for the solo, ano, mamaya meron kayong breakout session, di ba? So, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. And because sabi nga nila, Miss Lini, Cebu hasn't heard pa daw my testimony pala. Oo nga, narealize ko. I'm always here for shows. Magkakanta-kanta ako, ganyan. Pero hindi ko na share yung buhay ko. Like what I really went through. So surprise, surprise, meron kayong makikitang picture ni Tita ko ni Jan. <laughs> ah, sige, let's go to our first picture. This is me for the non-millennials. May mga millennials ba dito sa, ano? Marami, no? Meron naman. Pero yung mga medyo mas tumanda sa millennials. Naalala nyo pa to? Di ba? 4.30 na? Yan. Okay. For the millennials, sabi nila, ano to? <laughs> Guys, mga millennials, sikat ako dati. <laughs> yung mga 90s, grabe. Di ako makalakad dito. Papapicture sila lahat sa akin. So, hulaan nyo sino ako dyan? Nakita nyo ba? Alam nyo ba? Uh, talaga, tita. Na, na, et, eto, eto. Yun si Jolina yun, nasa gilid. Russell. Nakikilala niya yan, si Lindsay. Ayun, yung katabi ni Lindsay, yung... Yun, ako yun. <laughs> so, I was just 12 when I joined Ang TV. I was born and raised in a Catholic home with my... The home, the home of my parents. I went to regular school, all that. Until one day, somebody told me, you know, there's an audition for Walt Disney's Search for a Recording Star. So, ako naman, ay, sige, mag-audition nga ako dyan. Kasi na-discover ko sa aming guidance class, wala kasi yatang magawa yung teacher ko. Sabi niya, who has a talent to share? So, ako naman, me? <laughs> so, kumanta-kanta ako ng mga, don't lose your way, relax. Luma na mga kanta, no? Yun, so, kumanta ako, sabi ko, ay, may boses pala ako, no? So, yan na, nag-join, join na ako ng mga contest sa school and I could sing pala. So, that's when I found out na meron akong talent and then I joined that search for recording star and I went to up to the third round. Tapos after nun, wala na, natalo na ako. Pero... Doon, ko, doon nag start yung journey ko. And then eventually I heard about Ang TV. And then I joined Ang TV. Sabi ko, it would be nice to join something like that, no? Just to um, parang perform. I wanted to exercise my crafts kasi. So, well, ayun, nakapasa naman ako. Kahit na po talaga yung itsura ko dati ay sobrang payatot, na may braces. Talagang hindi ko alam kung paano ko naging artista. Talagang may just lang siguro talaga at napili ako nung araw na yon Tita, hindi talaga. 
Nung tinignan ko yung mga picture ko, hindi ko talaga alam paano ako naging artista. <laughs> Nung na-meet mo ko, parang medyo na-improve na eh. <laughs> 12 kasi ito, 14 mo ko na meet. Mga 2 years, medyo nagkaroon akong confidence. But I was so thin, so frail, I didn't really look artistine at all. But you know, uh, for some reason, God allowed that to happen and I joined and I became one of the, yun nga, sabi ko sa inyo, sikat ako dati, nung 90s. Talagang it became a big hit and so I, I, I really wasn't prepared for fame because I didn't naman grow up in like a family of... Um, mga artistas or communicators. So, it was all new to me. I had fun. And I just kept doing it over and over again. And then until I got so busy that I had to say uh, no to school already. Because there was a time that I got sick. And then my mom said, I think that by you being an artista and then you also going to school, your body can't handle it. Like I said, I was very frail. I was very thin. I wasn't really the healthiest person. So my mom said that you might have to choose. And then she offered, you might want to do home study. So sabi ko, sige, gagawin ko na lang yung home study because I was enjoying at that time. So that that's the start of my career. 12, 13, 14, hanggang ngayon na nga, nag na nga ako kay Tita Connie. Naging ano, nandiscover ko na I can act pala, ganyan. So, Before, it was just really singing, and then I knew that I, could, I, I learned how to dance, I learned how to act. So that was the start of my career. Eventually, tumatagal, tumatagal, tumatagal. Come around mga 18, nagkakaroon na ako ng uh, medyo, not naman worries, but more like, what am I gonna do next? Diba in our industry, or even in, in many industries, evolution is important. Like, how will you evolve as, as an artist? Or your change, diba? Your, your re... Reinvention is the name of the game. And people were always asking me, what's your next thing? And I didn't really plan for these things. I, I just said, you know, I'll just keep working because I love to work. I didn't really mean to be a superstar. I just wanted to sing. That was my original desire. So now that they were asking me to reinvent, I didn't know what to do. And then some people were suggesting, how many of us know that when you don't have a plan, others will make a plan for you? So I didn't have a plan. I was just, you know, yeah, okay, sige, gawin natin to, gawin natin yan. Oh, this earns more money, I'll just do that. Ganun lang yung mga decisions ko in life. I didn't have a solid plan. I didn't have a belief that I could hold on to. Above all, I didn't have God. So I had no wisdom. Everybody was wise to me at this point. I was young and even my mom was like, she doesn't know this business, so I couldn't blame her. Everybody is suggesting, do this, do that, ganyan. Until one day, may nagsabi, at alam ko na kung nasa ng source nun, hindi pala kay God galing yun. Pero sinabi sa akin, ayaw mong bang magpa-sexy? Why don't you do sexy roles? Yung reaction ko talaga, medyo comedy kasi sabi ko, ako po? Paano po ito naging sexy? <laughs> kasi ang payat-payat ko, talaga parang ako, sino nakakakita ng ganun ako? But, Because these people were really saying that, you know, if you do this, if you change a little bit of your hair and the way you look and all that, you'd be a superstar. That's the gap in our industry right now. So, syempre, like I said, we didn't have a plan. It sounded good to us. And so, I jumped on that ship. So, mga 19, I started that. I changed my image. And then when I changed my image, parang biglang nabuhay yung mundo sa paligid ko na parang lahat sila, wow, grabe, you're like this, you can do that, and you're so sexy pala, you're so pretty pala. And every time I would go out, there was success following me. In everything that I did, like all sold out concerts, and then a lot of people were becoming my fans because I had that kind of image, but all of my fans were really more guys than women. So parang, pero to you, wow, this brings me money. People are congratulating me. This must be right. Because these are signs eh. Di ba natama yung ginagawa mo? Lalo na bata pa lang naman ako. So I was like thinking, maybe this is right. So I would do like films that I can't even be proud of today. I won't be able to show to any one of you, not my children especially. So these were the kinds of things that I got into. And I also knew deep inside my heart that something was wrong. I was just trying to make it feel right on the surface because what will I do? This is the source of my money, the source of my identity, the source of my confidence at that time. So, sige, I just kept going. But deep down inside, parang may mali eh. Hindi ko lang ma-pinpoint kung ano yung mali. 
So I just kept going, I kept going, and the one day I just got tired. I said, you know, is there nothing else besides work, beyond work? I'm just so tired of doing the same thing over and over again. And just because I felt that something was wrong, something was amiss, I also got into different kinds of things. I got into drugs, I would get into drinking. So by that time, I was like, half of me was made out of coffee and half of me was made out of alcohol. Ganon, ganon na kong klaseng tao kasi I was just really trying to cope with everything that I was going through. I knew that something was wrong. I didn't know what it was. And I also didn't like it that I had no other life but work, work, work every day. So work became my idol. Plus the fact was the added pressure of I was the breadwinner of our family. So there were many things that I was balancing in my head na should I let this go if I don't really feel right about it? But then again, my Who's going to feed my family? How will I support them if I don't have that money? And so I just kept going. I tried to cover it up with alcohol, relationships, maraming panakit butas, di ba? Yon, naghanap ako ng mga panakit butas ko. And for a moment, I would be happy. But then, when I get back to reality, I, I still know na something's not right. And of course, you know, when you look that way, when you look lost, all these people who have God in them, naaamoy ka nila. <laughs> See, mga kasama ko sa work, parang sabi niya, parang lost to. Hatake natin to. So nakikita na, I'm sure that Tito Connie already saw that way beforehand. She already saw it when I was 14. She already prayed with me. But I was too young to really understand then. And you know, how many of us know, di ba, na sometimes God will speak to you and then you tune it out. And then after a while, it appears again and you say, gosh, you know, I really need God. So by this point, I was already 25 when I realized I really want to stop this kind of life na. Pero I don't know where to start. So some of the Christians who were getting saved, uh, some of the co-workers that were getting saved around me at that time, mga ano to, mga starlets, baka hindi nyo kilala sila, Piolo Pascual, lala nyo yun? Yun, pa, no, medyo konting sikat lang yun eh. So, <laughs> na, nasisave sila all around me, pati yung friend namin si Dante, also Sam Milby. They would keep asking me to go to Bible study. Sabi ko, bakit naman Bible study? Napaka corny naman yan. Wala bang mas, ano, pag inuma na lang tayo, ganyan. So lahat sila sa, hmm, all the more, kailangan mo ng Bible study. <laughs> ganyan. So, but syaga sila sa akin until, and they would ask me to go to service. But for me, I was like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna go to that kind of service. O, of course, no, I have my own faith. Nag, sarila akong nagdadasal, okay? Hindi ko na kailangan yan. Until one day, nauto ako ni Sam Milby. Sabi niya, ate! Sabi niya, sabi nung mga nandito sa ano, of course, he said in English, na medyo may konting Tagalog na baloktot. <laughs> sabi niya, ate, somebody said that you were here in Rockwell. Ganyan, ganyan. Sabi ko, aya, I left na. Tapos sabi niya, ah, can I meet you today? Sabi ko, hmm, Sunday, yayayain ako nito sa church. Sabi ko, I know, I'm sorry, I'm, go I'm going home na kasi. Sabi niya, ah, yeah, that's perfect because you will pass by Ortigas, right? That's where I will go to church. Sabi ko, patay, <laughs> na-corner ako. <laughs> so sige, go na lang ako. Punta ako doon ngayon sa, ano, sa service nila. Sige, sabi ko, pupunta na lang ako dito sa service. Remember, I was born and raised a Catholic. This was my first evangelical service and I enter a cinema because at that time the center was being renovated so they had to be in the cinema so I was so it was all new to me I was like why is it in a cinehan movie ba to <laughs> no ba yan so lakad lakad ako tapos they were all praise and worship na ganyan Jesus Jesus pag tingin ko asan yung Jesus <laughs> kasi hanahanap ko walang Jesus dun sa Pero may banda. Ano ba ito? Concert ba itong napuntahan ko? So talagang litong-lito na ako. Habi ko, pero Jesus daw. O sige, okay. Until they put me there sa mga th third, ano, third row. So I sat there quietly and I said, you know what? I think this is wrong. This is not right. This is the last time I will be tricked by this Sam Milby. Okay? Cute siya, pero okay. Hindi na ako papauto sa kanya. Ganyan. Yan, magdidesisyon na ako na mag-isa. Sa ko. And then this preacher started talking, ganyan, okay. Tapos may sinabi siya about the bleeding woman. Do you guys know the story of the bleeding woman in the Bible? When he started talking about the bleeding woman, somehow my heart opened and I felt like crying, which, you know, I'm not one who is easy to cry. It takes me quite a lot before I cry. So I was like, 
so weirded out that I felt like crying. And then, as I was listening, sabi ko, I think I know why I'm crying because this woman, I could relate very much with this woman. This woman has been bleeding for 12 years. And it says in the book of Luke that she went to many physicians, but she wasn't healed. How many of us know that over one week, if you're still bleeding, something is wrong with you? This girl has been bleeding for 12 years. Something must be really, really wrong with her. And during her time, it was even taboo to be beside someone who has her thing for the month, right? So now it's accepted now, but that time, no, we cannot touch. So you can just imagine the shame of that woman, of being able to master herself, to get to say, na, asan ba yung Jesus na yan? I just really want to touch the robe of, of this guy, right? Because he has power to heal me. So for her to get herself there is already trying to overcome her shame. And I could relate very much. I felt like, mm, maybe that's what I've been feeling all this time. There was shame. Dignity was taken away from me being a woman and having to sell myself in those movies that way. No one protected me enough to say that, you know, God has given you dignity and let's preserve that. God has given you purity. This is his gift to you. Let's preserve that. What did I do? I just let it go. I just let it go for the world to see. And as a result, I really felt broken. I felt like that bleeding woman who has been bleeding for 12 years. And guess what? It was my 12th year in the business during that year. So I said, okay, I think someone is talking to me. <laughs> so pinipiginan ko pa, nagpapakaproud pa ako. Parang someone is talking to me, parang God is talking to me. And I realized, okay, maybe I should give this a try. So after that, everybody around me uh, sensed that, you know, uh, I think she's open. So they immediately prayed for me. And tinapon agad ako agad kay Tita Honey. <laughs> I think tinawagan ka agad yata ni Erickson. Eh? Parang, Tita, I have one girl for you. <laughs> A Piola ba? Okay, Piola called you. And um, so I started to meet with Tita Connie. And there was, ano pa yun? 12 sessions pa yung one-to-one -one nun. So we went through 12 sessions of this booklet that we use in church together. And there, every session, I would, session after session, cry my heart out to her. Because I just realized that all these years, I was broken, and all I needed to do was touch the hem of Jesus' robe, and I will be healed. And I felt the healing of God. Na, ah, God pala loves me. God pala can heal me in an instant like that. Well, you know, in an instant in some places. In, in some place it says, places, work pa rin siya, di ba? And I'm just so glad that Tita Connie was so much aga with me. And let, let me just say this, huh? if you don't have a mentor, go and find one. If you don't have anyone who you can do life with, or like you don't have a disciple, go and find one. Because it really helped me a lot that Tita Connie would just regularly meet with me and go through all of the junk in my heart. Until healing after healing after healing, breaking, breaking, breaking. These are not, you don't identify with these anymore. You don't identify with your past anymore. You are a new creation. Somebody has to keep saying that to you, right? Because even if you read it from the Bible, the lies, because it can be so strong that you need others to agree with you. You are a new creation. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, you are a new creation. Diba? Sometimes hard to believe, eh. Kasi pag tingin mo, it's still me. But we are a process. So I'll show you a picture of, oh, there, there. Ganda ng picture natin, diba? <laughs> Sabi ko, gusto ko ba ito palabas? Parang laki ng mukha ko dyan. <laughs> Mas maganda na ako ngayon eh. <laughs> diba? O, oh, mag-agree kayo. <laughs> so, maganda na ako dyan. Ay, dito, ngayon. So, that was um, during our victory weekend. And, you know, it really just helped me a lot to walk with Tita Connie. And to be reminded day after day after day that I'm a new creation. Let me tell you a, 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 a short story, ah. One of those days na nagme-mentoring kami ni Tita Connie, syempre hindi pa naman ako fully new. So, I mean, like, yung paniniwala ko, parang kailangan pang itweak in many places and areas. And I still would smoke a lot. So, I was a smoker before. Maniwala ba kayong itsura ko? I was, ano, yung mga, ano, two packs a day, ganyan. Ganyan ako mag-smoke before. So, Sabi ko, Lord, sa meetings namin, sana wag na lang pong tanongin ni Tita Connie kung nagsusmoke ako kasi yoko po maglay. Magpatulong pa kay Lord, no? Ganda. 
<laughs> Parang siguro sabi ni Lord, ano ka ba? <laughs> Siyempre gusto ko matigil mo yan. <laughs> so, one of those days, tinanong nga niya. Sabi niya, oh, so tapos na kami. Sabi ko, yes, okay, hindi niya tinanong. Tapos na kami, pa-end na kami. Lalabas na ako. So I was about to get out of the door when she said, oh, by the way, do you still smoke? Siguro mga eternity in my mind na nagde-decision ako. Sasabihin ko ba? Hindi ko ba sasabihin? Sasabihin ko ba? Hindi ko ba sasabihin? Opo! Opo. Nag-smoke pa po ako eh. So, so, I was so scared that she would get mad at me. And she said, ah, it's okay. Uunahin ni Lord yung heart mo. That's what she told me. And I felt like it's, it was just the, such a love and power of God. Na parang God is not someone who, who's out to punish you. You do wrong, you do right. He's not like that. He's actually asking you, come as you are. I'll change you with my love. And that's what I felt through Tita Connie. So go and find someone that you can do life with. Someone who can rally you and say, rally with you and say, I am a new creation. It doesn't feel like it yet now, but we will be, we will be, we will be. Every day is that you're believing more and more that you are a new creation. Okay, so this is my, my picture with Tita Connie. The next picture is when uh, I finally graduated. I know. Okay, magkabalik ta. This is my um, baptism. That was on the same year when I got tricked by Sam Milby. Radical talaga. Sabi ko, ito pala yung hinahanap ko. Buong buhay ko, hindi nyo sinabi sa akin. So, mga 30 minutes ako nakalubog for all my sins. De, joke lang. <laughs> Sabi ko, lagyan yun lang akong tangke. <laughs> Dami eh. <laughs> Kailangan mamatay lahat yun eh. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was my next picture is when I graduate. Oh, okay, a, a short story about my educational life. Like I said, I went to home study when I was around 13. And I never got to go to regular school all throughout my life. And so when finally I felt like, you know, I need to finish this part of me. I need to graduate. I need to have that degree. I was already 25. Can you imagine being freshy at 25? So yung ORSEM namin, yung talagang nag introduce ng mga bagong ano, mga bagong estudyante, sabi, takbo! Tatakbo daw sa buong campus. Sabi ko, teka muna, mas mga bata kayo sa akin. <laughs> Nahuhuli ako. <laughs> so medyo mabagal na ako. But you know, I, by the grace of God, I was able to get my degree pa rin, Even in my 20s. And so after that, uh, I also became a part of, have you, do you remember, Umagang Kay Ganda? Okay, when I finally decided that, you know what, God has given me the gift of dignity and of purity, I, I need to be holy and blameless before Him. He's gonna help me wash away my past. I said, I started saying no to all of these sexy roles. But that was my identity, at least in, in the industry. So can you just imagine how much money I lost by saying no, no, no. But it was my conviction. I said, I'm not gonna do this anymore because I love God and I trust God. I'm not gonna go hungry even if I keep saying no to these things. And you know, really, not a day went by na wala kaming kinain ng pamilya ko. Hindi kami naghirap kahit na nag-say no ako sa lahat ng yan. At hindi lang yun, doors were open for me. Like this one, can you imagine me on a news and current affairs show? Ba't ka natawa? <laughs> Parang tawang tawa ka, hindi ako, hindi ako bagay. <laughs> bagay naman, di ba? <laughs> but during that time, di ba? Parang, ha? Huh? Ako? Ako? Gusto nila ako dyan sa show na yan? But God started opening doors for me. I became a host. And then that's when I rediscovered my love for writing. And I would keep on writing. And other people would say, na, eh, ang galing mo pala magsulat. Sabi ko, oh, nga, hindi ko rin alam. <laughs> but you know, kasi when we don't pursue kasi the plans of God for us, what He wants for us, at pumupunta tayo sa ibang lugar, hindi mo rin nakikita kung ano yung design na meron siya para sa'yo. Eh. I didn't really know that God gave me the gift of writing. God gave me the gift of speaking. I didn't even know that because I kept pursuing my own desires. And so when finally I went back on the right track, I was just so humbled by the thought that, you know, even if I went wrong for so many years of my life, God will still give to me what He has prepared for me. He's really not a God who punishes eh. Na eh, alam mo yung unang part ng buhay mo, ano yung mali eh. So, hindi ko nalang bibigay sa yung mga plenano ko for you. God's not like that. We can be like that, but He's not like that. Yes, our sins have consequences, 
But remember that these are not punishments of God. God will still give to you what He has prepared for you. And in His wisdom, He allows things to happen. So eventually, after, you know, that whole, nag-aaral ako ulit, nag, nag, nagkaroon ako ng bagong uh, identity sa show business, um, I finally found the one. Next, here's, yes, yung, ano, wedding picture nam. And that was um, during sunset in 2010. Um, I finally, eto pa, matatawa kayo ulit. Nakapangasawa ako ng pastor. Pastor's wife ako. Oh, di ba? Joke tal. Parang totoo ba yan? <laughs> si Rika, news and current affairs girl. At saka pastor's wife. Oh, di ba? Kahit ako hindi ko maisip yung storyline na yun. Only God can do something like that, right? So, I ne not in my wildest dreams that I would ever end up with a pastor, but I did. And you know, he's one of the Next to God, he's the best decision. So, first is being with Jesus, the best decision. Second is being with this man. Single ladies, ito yung ano ko sa buhay, no? Ang asa, <laughs> ano na eh, no? Parang tanda na, no? <laughs> uh, ako, kung mag-aasawa kayo kasi, habang ba, buhay mo na yan kasama, di ba? Okay. So, ayaw mo namang habang buhay mo kasama ang isang pagkakamali. Bawat gising mo, ay, mali ka pa rin. <laughs> Pagising mo, naku, mali pa rin. Paano ba to? <laughs> Ganyan, di ba? So, isiping mabuti. <laughs> isiping mabuti, magdasal ng mabuti, mas okay na lang na single kaysa mali. ba? <laughs> Yan ang ruling ko in life. Sabi ko talaga dati, ay, sabi sa Bible, I must submit. Eh, kung yung sasubmitan ko, eh, hindi ka submit-submit, paano na lang? ba? Kasi kung nag-submit na ako, asawa ko, sabi niya, talon tayo dito sa bangin. Ay, sure! Eh, submit daw, ba? So, dapat yung maglilid na talaga. So, single women, put that in your minds, ha? There is nobody better than God. God is the best, ba? Tita Connie's husband is the Lord. You already are loved. So, don't even think of, ah, ito pwede na rin to, uh, pa, you know, pampalipas oras. Kung ganun lang, let's get puppies, no? Let's get pets. Okay? If we want somebody loyal, ganyan, and won't even tell you what to do, no? Yung you tell that puppy what to do. But the puppy will not tell you, let's go here. Ganyan, you won't submit to your puppy, so get a puppy. <laughs> and then, of course, after four years of marriage, we finally had our first son. His name is Philip, and this is how he looks now. Four years old na siya. So that's like, like one of the life-changing moments. Many par parents in this room know that when once a firstborn comes, it's just never the same again, right? That we are we are in charge of world changers, right? Right in our own homes. The moment they are born, our worlds are changed. We don't sleep, we don't eat, <laughs> we don't have a life. <laughs> I, my world has changed. <laughs> but it's such a fulfilling task to have, right? It's such a privilege to be a parent. Um, so here are the photos of our family right now. Yeah, and so that was last New Year. So I have more photos there. And like what was said earlier, I'm also now enrolled in um, uh, an, an online course in Wheaton College. I was privileged to be picked by, as one of those uh, people that our church would sponsor. Um, that was in Chicago. And our course is called Evangelism and Leadership. And you know what? It was such a, it's also a testimony of God's grace on my life. Remember, I didn't have a, the normal track when it comes to education. I never thought I would even finish college, but I did. And after I did, God would even give me further studies. Like, I never imagined that this would happen. Now, these are the ladies that came to our Christmas party. So one of the things that I'm busy with right now is also, as Tita Connie did it to me, I also do it to others. I mentor other women also. So you are being mentored by someone. Make sure you're mentoring the next generation also. Because this is very important. We, we need to be able to pass what was passed on to us, right? We need to keep on sharing His Word, sharing the Gospel, and raising more and more women who can lead in different places, right? Who can lead in church, lead in the marketplace. It doesn't matter where God puts you, where God calls you. It is important that you lead with the grace and the power of God, right? So right now, this is what I'm busy with. And then also I have my blog, everydayanewpage.com, and also the social media sites that I am on. 
Sige. Yan. Okay. So, yun yung mga where, where I'm busy right now. Because God has given me a platform, I want to use it for His glory. So, I always tell stories there. Not always with verses, not always with the Bible. Because we want to reach those who don't know that yet, right? So, we just want to show them, ano ba talaga yung buhay na meron si God? Kasi buhay naman na meron si God, eh hindi naman parang may Bible verse kang nakasulat sa noo mo all the time, right? It's always in your heart. It's always in your mouth. And it's in your life, most especially. The way that you conduct yourself, right? So that this is where mainly I display it more than TV. Kasi marami nagtatanong sa akin, hindi ka na ba magti-TV? Um, I, I would love to, but siguro when I have more time. So that's what I'm busy about. And also, uh, I, do, um, I do campus ministry work. Together, my husband. My husband it actually leads the campus ministry of our church. And so, I do it together with him. So, there. Maraming mga pangyayari. Kaya hindi rin ako masyadong nakapunta dito. But really, I am just so happy to be here in Cebu. Parang feeling ko gift din siya sa akin. Kasi I've been telling din sila, Miss Lini, na isa sa mga dreams ko is yung magpunta lang ako dito na walang gagawin. Pupunta ako sa kawasan. Mag-iikot-ikot ako at dadalhin ko yung anak ko para ma-discover ang Cebu. And hindi mangyari ngayon, pwedeng mangyari pa later part of the year. But it's been, I think this is part of God's gift to me to bring me here. Why? I just turned, okay, birthday ko nung March 7. Ilang taon ako? Ilang taon ako? Sige, make a guess. Yes! Dito ko, nito, 27. Yes, um, higher, higher. <laughs> <laughs> Nagpa-auction eh. How, how old do you think I am? Ha? 32. Ano pa? Uh, ay, nagbabasa eh. Nagbabasa ng vlog. Blinag ko to. Pagka nagbabasa kayo ng vlog, blinag ko to. Okay, I am isang tumataginting na 37. And you know, of all my birthdays, yeah, sige, palakpakan yung age ko. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> At 37, okay, Medyo nag po ako. I'm not a very sentimental, uh, no, I'm a sentimental person, I'm not emotional. So I find many things sentimental, but this one, I became very emotional approaching 37 because I really felt like so many things in my life were going away. My skin has always been perfect until 35, ganyan, 35, 36, sabi ko ba, kakapimple na ako, tsaka may mga lines na siya. So I, 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 I feel the need for skin care. For the first time of uh, in my life, in terms of uh, in in when it comes to because I'm a content creator also, eh, so I do this for my blog and I do this for different companies, and you know I, I felt like I was already running out of ideas. I said, you know, I'm one who's always with one thousand ideas, but this year it feels like my ideas are being shut down. They're not all great, pala, and I feel like even that my excellence in that area is already kind of going away. It's kind of, uh, medyo na, na realize ko na I'm not that great pala. When it comes to my strength, I cannot even stay awake past 12 anymore. Okay? Dati, I don't sleep. I only sleep two hours a week. Kasi I could work, 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 work. Two hours lang yung solid sleep ko. Lahat nasa car na lang ako natutulog in the plane. Now, I can't do that. And I could feel na my strength is really going away. It's not like before anymore. And I, I'm pretty sure that many of you have felt that also. I've had my health scares this year. Um, I started the year by going to the ER because there was a hip pain here and I had a lump here. And I said, oh my gosh, will I be seeing more of you ER people this year? I don't want that. But I think that's the reality of life. Our outer outer cajon is going away. It's not going to stay there forever. It's really, it's temporal, diba? It's not eternal. These bodies are not eternal. And all of these things were scaring me. And then, top it with social media. You, you scroll and you see, ganda niya. Mag-age lang naman kami, pero ba't parang mas maganda siya? <laughs> and then you see, you scroll pa, oh, they have such a nice house. How come I don't have this kind of house pa kaya, no? And then you scroll again. Wow, ang close naman nila. Oh, sino kaya yung relationship ko na ganito? And how many of us have felt that way? Just by simply scrolling through the walls, like the, the, our screens, right? This thumb is so powerful. We do this, 
it feeds so many things in our heads. And the number one thing, the number one message of what we see online is what you don't have. Not what you have. It will not remind you of what you have, but it will remind you of what others have and what you don't have. And it causes me to be fearful. It causes me to be insecure. And that's my goal talaga today, to tell you that I'm just as vulnerable as all of you. You might think that when I post these things online, she's got a perfect life, she's got the best husband, she's got a great kid. It's not like that every day. I have my bad moments. It's just that I don't publish it, right? So let's remember that when we scroll on the screens, these people are publishing the best. They're not publishing the worst. So, <laughs> parang gusto ko yung buhay niya. Eh, alam mo ba ko ano yung buhay niya pag naka-off na yung phone niya? Alam niyo ba ang buhay ko? I'm not saying I'm evil, but I don't have it all good. There are days that I'm a horrible person. There are days when I'm just not great. But you don't see that, right? I know I'm telling this to you, but I should be telling this to myself also every day. Because I get fearful, I get insecure, and all of that is happening to all of us, right? So what are three things? Oh, siguro, I was trying to think of what are the three things that, you know, we hold on to. What, what are the three things that tell us or parang the measure of how much other people will love us? The topic, this, the, the theme for this year is everlasting love. And we all are craving for love. Who wants to be loved? All of us, diba? So all of us want to be loved. But we all have different ways of going about it, eh. And yung social media nga, malakas makagulo yan eh. Kasi parang yung social media, nagiging measure of love na rin yan eh. Kung gano'ng karaming thumbs up, feeling mo ganun ka kalove, di ba? It could fool us to think na ganun ka kalove. Pagka walang, walang thumbs up, hindi tayo love. So ano yung mga rubric natin or standard natin para, para mapaghirapan natin tong love na to, para ma-deserve natin to? One is beauty. How pretty are you? How's your skin? How's your body? Diba? Yung beauty natin, uh, okay, parang siguro kung ganito yung itsura ko, kung mas koreana yung itsura ko today, mas love nila ako. Kasi koreana yung uso ngayon eh, diba? Al nakakatawa nga yung mga uso, diba? Na nagkaiba-iba na. Dati kasi, parang ang uso manipis na kilay. So pinakalbo, kilay. O, tanggalin mo lahat yan, ate. Tinanggal. Yes, pasok ako. They love me. Eh today, oo, sobra, ganito kakapal. Parang bigote. Sabi ko, uso na ba yan? Kala, nung huling check ko, mas ano lang yung manipis. So ngayon, makapal naman. So parang, if we're always gonna follow the beauty of the world, we're always gonna have to keep on changing just so people love us, right? The other thing, relationships. How connected are you? Your measure of love from your husband or your measure of love from your friends. Your, yes, they should love you. But we all know that we all fall short, di ba? Even our kids, we pour so much on these little ones. Lalo siguro si Tito Connit, lumaki na yung mga anak niya. And I'm sure that those with older children have experienced na, Grabe, hindi ako natulog ng mga tatlong taon sa'yo. Tapos ngayon, sinasagot-sagot mo na ako. Yung anak ko nga, narit ako eh. Kasi kumakanta ako eh. A million dreams are keeping me awake. So kala ko mabibless siya sa boses ko. Sabi niya, Why? Eh, hindi ko mat masagot kung why. Eh, eh, wag na, wag ka na makinig. <laughs> diba? I mean, like, if we always look for that affirmation, that love from other people, they will always fall short, as you would also fall short towards them. What's another measure? We have our work. Whether it is your work in the house or work outside, we use it as a measure. Gano'ng kagaling. Dum yung mga bosses ko ba, love nila ako? Or, yung boss mo sa bahay, love ba ako naman, nalinis ko ba ito ng mabuti? Kasi baka mamaya kung hindi ko nalinis masyado yung, yung floor, hindi ko masyado nalinis yung mga, hindi na nila ako lahat mahal. That's kind of like how we were fed, eh, di ba? This is how other people will love us or the world will love us. And you know, there's so much of love that we know today that only comes from movies, comes from popular culture, comes from media, social media, the way that you should be loved according to the thought leaders of the country. And we forget that the Bible has a very different way of looking at these things. The Bible has a way of redefining. Jesus has redefined so much for us. And He wants it, our burden, to be easy and to be light. 
He wants us, to, He wants to give us rest. Tayo naman, we want to keep on running after these things. Kasi yun yung maraming reasons eh. Yun yung pinapa, pinapaniwala sa atin ng mundo. So today, I was, when I was asking God, sabi ko, God, what do I tell these women? We're gonna talk about everlasting love, but what about your love do you want to share with them? I asked God talaga, what do you want them to hear? And I, I was able to ke- go, come up with three points. So are we ready to go through that? And okay, let's start with this. God's will is good, acceptable, and perfect. That is what it says in Romans 12, right? Good, acceptable, and perfect. But what does it say there? Hindi natin nakakita kasi usually yung first part. So the next slide says, Do not be conformed to this world because this world has its own definitions. If you follow that, you're just gonna have their definitions and you're gonna have to play by their rules. But also be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Because some of these things have been already um, ingrained in our heads since we were small. Because it doesn't even go as far as, you know, social media or TV. Sometimes the love that we see in our own homes, where we grew up in, our own backgrounds. You may have come from a broken home. I don't have, my parents are not separated, but they're not really in good terms. Like, they're not functioning as man and wife. And I have one brother who's separated so can you just imagine me growing up and seeing that maybe this is what love looks like so when I actually got saved I said you know I'm not gonna be one to marry or to have children because they all fail anyway so that was how my mind was conditioned growing up and it take it took a lot of renewing washing of my mind with God's word and I'm just so grateful again for Tita Connie and all the others who went through with me that entire time na kailangan nila akong bugbugin ano ba yung sinasabi ng Bible tungkol sa pagmamahal ng Diyos tungkol sa buhay ng isang taong nasa Diyos and so today I want to share with you three things about love what the world says and also what the word says so number one the world says work for love we need to be something in order for us to be loved right that's what it says what what does god's word says the word says you are made out of love alam nyo ba yung ano yung yung sinasabi nila na we are part stardust di ba ganun daw tayo part stardust daw tayo dahil sa mga wag nyo na akong tanungin masyado science yun eh Oo, wag yung mga math tsaka science, ano na lang, literature na lang pag, pag-usapan natin. But that's what they say. But do you know that we are made out of love? What do I mean? So let's see the word. The word says, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Diba? Alam natin yan. God is love, God is love, God is love. But, can we go to the next slide? Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. If God is love, then so are we. We are made out of His love. In fact, one of the most beautiful explanations that I've heard, because if you think about it, how can God be love, di ba? Love exists in a relationship. It cannot exist. Kahit nga yung sinabi ko, I love ko yung sapatos ko. It's a relationship between me and my shoe, right? So love only exists in a relationship. So how can be God love? But He's a triune God. He's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and they loved each other for all eternity until they said, let's make man in our image and likeness. They were overflowing with love that all of us are here today. So you all, ha, yung kaharap mo, sabi mo, you are made out of love. Ayan. So pagka talaga nainis ka na dyan sa kaibigan mo, kainis to eh, minsan. Pero gawang, gawang pagmamahal to eh. Naks, diba? So we have to remind that. It's also a very good thing to remember when, when we're already about to give up on a person. This, this person is made in the image and likeness of God. There is love in this person. I just need to be able to draw it out, right? We need to believe that. And we see this, this in every new, kung ayaw mo nyo pang maniwala, every newborn baby. Pag may newborn baby, hindi mo pa alam ang pangalan, hindi mo pa alam kung anong magiging siya sa isang balang araw, pero pag tinignan mo, grabe, 
kamahal-mahal itong batang to, ganun ka. Nung newborn baby ka, kamahal-mahal ka at ganun ka nakita ng Diyos. You are made out of love. What's another thing? The world says, be perfect so I can love you. But what does God's word say? You will be perfected by God's love. 1 Corinthians 13 says, the very famous, di ba? Alam natin, love is patient, love is kind, does not envy, does not boast, is not proud, does not dishonor others, not self-seeking, not easily angered, keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. What's another thing that we can look to? The next slide is, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has something to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected by love. Bakit tayo, iniisip ko to dati, paano kaya yung love casts out fear? Paano kaya yun, no? Bakit, ano ba yung meron sa love ni God? And then I realized that if you go to 1 Corinthians 13, it says it's patient, it's kind, it perseveres, and it never fails. It doesn't stop. It's actually wait. It's not asking for a perfect person kasi love is patient, love is kind. Kung maglalove ka, tapos patient at kind na yung ilalove mo, hindi na pala love yun. Diba? Ay, madali eh. Pero love is patient. It is able to do, it is able to overcome those things. It is able to bring you to that level where you will be perfected by this love. You know, there's this study that Babies are not natural learners. Di ba sabi nila, para daw sponge yun. Ah, lahat pala tayo, pag pinanganak, we're wired to, for survival. Di ba? Instinct natin yun na for survival. But what makes us learn is that if the, the home or the unit is able to make you feel safe, if you are loved enough, it's gonna make you feel safe that you can pursue other things. It will free you to pursue other things. And I believe that that's what the Word of God is saying. That the love of God is like that. It will always persevere. It will always hope. It will always trust. It will always protect you. So you don't have to fear. You don't have to fear na, you know, one day, pagka ano, medyo naka, nakaranas, ah, naka, nakagawa ako ng konting unkindness or hindi ako patient sa araw na to. Ay, sige, iwanan na kita. Hindi ganun si God. Kung ganun yung ibang tao sa'yo, at kung ganun ang naranasan mo, hindi ganun si God sa'yo. Kasi siya, He will protect, always trust, He will hope, and He will persevere, and He will not fail. Yun yung love niya. Kaya pala, His perfect love will drive away every fear in me. Kasi what do we fear ba? We fear being left. Iwan mo na ako, hindi mo na ako love kasi... Unkind ako kahapon, di malinis yung kwarto kahapon, hindi, di, hindi masyadong maganda yung pagsabi ko nito, iwan mo na ako. Hindi. Kasi ka di kanya iiwan. Eh kaya, kaya nga ako nandito. Kasi kung unkind ka, kaya nating baguhin yan together. That's the kind of love that we have in Him. Third, world says, I will love you only when it's easy. Di ba? But what does the Word of God say? The Word of God says, I will love you through it all. Where do we see it? We see it in Romans 8, verses 35 to 38. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword, as it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Next. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm sure that neither death nor life, angels, rulers, Things present, yung ngayon, yung bukas, things to come. Powers, sinong mga may power ngayon? Gano kataas, gano kalalim? Kahit na ano pa, nothing else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, the Christ Jesus our Lord. And when I was reading this the last time, I was just so struck by, gosh, all of these things are gonna happen, huh? It can happen to me. Tribulation, distress, famine, nakedness, sword. But nothing can separate me from the love of that. There's my promise. No matter what you do, whether you cost it or others cost it, nothing can separate my love from you. I will all, di ba, Emmanuel, He is always gonna be with us. 
And this is what we want at the end of the day. No matter what happens. Diba ito yung mga vows natin? Sa, ano, sa mga kasal. Kahit di ka pa kasal, pag tinignan mo, ano ba, till death do us part, ito ang maka- true sickness, health. Mayaman ka, mahirap ka, may sakit ka, wala kang sakit. Magsasama tayo. Yun din yung sinasabi ni Lord. Pero more than conquer ka, because not even death can separate you. There is no marriage in heaven. I will have no husband in heaven. Only the Lord. Even the strongest love, even if you have a perfect marriage here on earth, I don't mean to disillusion you, but that's not it. Great if you have a great, great marriage. I have a great marriage. And that's a, you know, speaks to me about the love of God. At the end of the day, as much as I love this kind of marriage, there is something more. This one says, till death do us part. This one, not even death can part me from the love of Christ. And again, at the end of the day, this is what we want. Do I have beauty that lasts? No. Do I have, I mean, like, siguro ngayon, pwede pa, pero siguro, konti pang taon, mawawala na talaga yan. Kaya nga yung advice ko sa kanila, gusto mo ba ng gwapo? O isang araw, kulubot na rin kayong dalawa, paano yon? <laughs> but, di ba, beauty, everything external, even relationships, they all, they could go, I mean, some will last until you die. Uh, work. Until when is this viable? Until when is this, is this going to be good for you? But nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. If you have that, you're not going to fear. Of course, you're going to have your own issues, but you always can go back to, you know what? I have somebody who loves me. I can love actually because somebody first loved me. And that's the love of Christ that you have with you. So as a conclusion, what do I want to leave with you? You are made for love. You are loved. And always you will be. But I know, no, it sounds so ganda, gandang pakinggan. Pero again, no, when we go back to our own worlds, we feel like, but it doesn't feel this way. It doesn't, I don't feel this love from the people around me. I don't feel this love in myself. And for many reasons, it could be caused by your own unbelief or it could be caused by your surrounding. I don't know where you're coming from. You have your own backgrounds and it might not be the best. You might be saying in your head, you can say that because you have a great life. Well, as a matter of fact, I don't. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm saved. God has been victorious in my life for 11 years now. But I'm, I'm not spared from all the heartaches of the world. Just in 2016, okay, a little something about me. I've always loved to have like many, many children. As early as 18, I wanted a barangay for sana my mga anak, no? Kaya lang dumating yung asawa ko, 28 na. So, hindi ko ma-prepackage yung mga anak nung 18. So, 28, tapos nagkaanak kami isa. Lalo na, nung nagkaanak kami, parang, grabe, I want so much more. I want mga, kung sana pwede, 10, ganyan. Kasi, it's, you know the feeling, right? Of, kahit na hindi ka mami, di ba, yung sobrang cute na baby. You want to have more of that. All the more, when he was growing, and I could see, there's just so much wonder in a child. And it's so healing to have a child. To just look at that innocence that I, I told my husband, after I'm, I'm good now with the CS, can we just start trying again? So he started trying, trying, trying. And then one day, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. In 2016, I was pregnant and I, I couldn't wait to tell the world because it was like, yes! And then it was sabay pa with my sister. So we announced it na, we're pregnant, ganyan. So happy na happy ako. Then I went to the doctor and I said, okay, ito na po yung checkup natin. No? Malalaman ko na kung ano yung, kung ilang months na siya, ay ano, ilang weeks na siya, kung may heartbeat na siya, ganun. And then, she did the Doppler thing on me. Doppler, Doppler. Hindi mahanap yung heartbeat. Sabi ko, bakit ganun? Parang hindi naman ganun yung first experience ko with my first son. Immediately, we found the heartbeat of Philip. But this one, I go, so is this normal? Is this like the baby is hiding and all that? And I could see my OB getting concerned already. So cut the long, to cut the long story short, we went to the ultrasound area. We had an ultrasound and found out 
that the baby has lost its heartbeat. Before that, kasi nakita ba namin yung heartbeat eh. And then the baby lost its heartbeat. And it was the first heartbreak of my life after I got saved na medyo malaki because I, I really wanted it. I really desired it. I wanted to have a lot of children. And then now I don't have that child. Worst part of it all, I have to give birth to this, this child, right? And so I have to take it out. And I, was, I fell into like a deep, deep, dark place in my life. I, I felt that was when I empathized with everyone who, who went through depression. Kasi parang feeling ko uulan every day. Kasi sabi ko, uulan ba ngayon? Tapos never umulan. Sabi ko, baka depressed pala ako noon. No? Kasi sa sobrang lungkot ko. And then I, I got over it. Why? Because of a community. I had people around me who would rally me in prayer. Who went through with me when it comes to healing and all that. So, great. 2016 yon. 2017, I found out pregnant ako ulit. Didn't know what to feel. I had a previous experience that was pretty traumatic. I didn't know what to feel. But I know I still wanted this baby. I still know that I want to have a lot of children. So I said, okay, let's wait for the best of God. I was in the States when that happened. And when I went home, I went immediately to, when I found out that I was pregnant, when I, when I got home, I went immediately to the OB because by that time, when I counted everything, I should be nine weeks. When I get there, they tell me, the baby is measuring only five weeks. Are you sure that the baby is nine weeks? So I gave the numbers. I said, this is when the last ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Sabi niya, hmm, yeah, should be nine weeks. But the baby is five weeks. But it's too early to tell that you've lost the baby. So let's just give you medicines and we'll see what happens. So I was like, wow, a new turn of story. They say that lightning cannot strike twice in the same place. And I was already scared that it was, is it going to happen again? And if it's going to happen again, why does God not tell me now? Can you just tell me now, am I going to have this child or not? And I just went home and I said, I really don't know what to feel. I can't, I can't grieve prematurely. I can't rejoice prematurely. I was in the middle. What did I do? I just kept listening to worship songs. I just kept reminding myself of the faithfulness of God. God is faithful. I cannot say that he's a God who just takes away because he gives. They say that God gives and God takes away. We always focus on he takes away. But the truth is he first gave. So I kept focusing on that. God gave, God gave, God gave. Another week, I go back and then I tell, I tell the OB, maybe you can tell me now if I have the baby or not. She says, it's the same size, still no heartbeat, still inconclusive. Let's wait another week. Ay, wow. <laughs> Grabe naman ang suspense na to. Okay, parang wala ba talaga? Hindi ko ba fast forward sa ending? Ano ba talaga yung ending? And by the end of it, of course, I find out I don't have a baby. I go home, and I'm going to lose this baby in my tummy again. But you know what? That's when I learned about the real love of God. Neither death nor life can separate me from the love of Christ. There was death in my womb, but God loved me. He cannot separate me from Christ. And I think that's what he taught me in those two weeks. He said, I have nothing. My husband cannot comfort me right now. I don't have this child. My son is cute. He's funny. But he's not that child. I still wanted that. But I learned this is what it means to be loved by Christ. Death, life, tribulation, distress. Things present, things to come. Nothing can separate me. All I had was God. And you know what it says? In the Bible, God is near to the brokenhearted. I share that story to, with you, all of you today, because I know you're broken. I know you come from places of brokenness. We're not here to lie. We're not here to say, oh, God's going to do this for me. If I become a Christian, everything, I'm going to be blessed. My life is going to be perfect. No, we're, st we're still living in a broken world, which someday will be fixed perfectly, but it's still not that way. And you all have your places of brokenness. 
But in that brokenness, God is near to you. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Just before I go, let me share this quote that I learned from one of our pastors. He mentioned this in his teaching. It's um, called School of Healing. So he would teach us about healing. When I compare this, Barbara Friedrichson is a psychologist. And he sa she said that when I compare love to oxygen and food, I'm not just taking poetic license. I'm drawing on science. New science illuminates for the first time how love in its absence fundamentally alters the biochemical in which your body is stepped. Steep, steep they, in turn, can alter the ways your DNA gets expressed within your cells. The love you do or do not experience today may quite literally change key aspects of your cellular architecture next season or next year. Cells that affect your physical health, your vitality, and your overall well-being. Love can change you on a cellular level. Love can heal you genetically. It can change you not poetically, physically, it can heal you. Are you broken today? Here's my question. What does it mean to be loved by God? You're broken, you need healing. The love of God is there to change you in every part of you, on every level that you can imagine. And if you don't have any idea of what this kind of love looks like, let me leave you with this. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay his life down for his friends, and Jesus laid his life for you. Remember that you were worth dying for, and he rose for you also. So if ever you go out, you go back out and say, I'm broken, everything around me is broken, I can still be whole because Jesus loved me. Love me enough to die for me on the cross. For all my sins, for the sins of others on me, for the evil that surrounds me. He died to that and said, no more of this. And we will rise together to be new creations. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for the women in this room. You all have put them here for a purpose, for a reason. It's not an accident that they are here. They may have willed it or somebody put them in here, but Lord, it is your purpose that they are here to hear this message this morning. God, I pray that when they go out, they just won't go out saying that you're going to do this for me. You're going to be victorious. You are victorious, but I also pray that they will be testifying to others as the bleeding woman has testified that you have healed them. Lord, minister your healing to the hearts of the women in this room. They all come from different places. I may not know the depths of their pain, the depths of their brokenness. Some of them even from their childhood. Some of them now. Some of them about to come. But Lord, you have covered all. You are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And you have covered all. You are near to the brokenhearted. Let us make, make us feel your presence, Lord. I pray that right in this moment, you will make them that you are so tangible and so real that you are willing to envelope them and embrace them with your love. The love that they look from the world, the love that they look from others, I pray, Lord, that they will find in you today. I pray that when they go out, they will just say, God loves me. I'm loved. I'm made out of love. And always I will be loved by this God. And that he is patient and he is kind. He will never fail. He will always persevere. Even if I'm not the best person today, his love is going to perfect me through it. So, Lord, thank you that you're going to minister your healing, your love, and your power to even change first their hearts, God. That you will change their hearts today. That it will begin there. And it will, I declare in the name of Jesus, that when they go out, as they carry that love out, it will eventually change their environments, their homes, their cities, communities, their nation. Thank you, Lord, that you are there to love us and you are there to use us and that we don't need to pretend to be perfect in front of you. But we are here, here vulnerable saying that this is all we are. Take us, change us, 
use us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Miss Rika. Please stay for a while. Yes. We will have Ooh. a photo up with you, but you know what? We are just so blessed by this beautiful message, right, ladies? You know what Miss Rika said a while.